Hello there, this is episode three of telemetry. So we've seen how to get telemetry into the system down to your transmitter. We've seen how to put it on the screen. But if you're flying a model airplane, then in my opinion, you really shouldn't be taking your eyes off it and not looking down at the screen. Um, different thing if you're uh, driving a ground vehicle or a boat. So wouldn't it be handy if the transmitter would speak to us both at when we want it to, and for any automated warnings that we've set up. Well, thank goodness it can do all of that, so let's have a look. As usual, we go into the menus, timer sensors, and this time we're going to voice output. And the top one there, a timer, you can select the timer that you've got, and this is why it, it's useful to name the timers when you create them. Uh, especially if you've got multiple timers, because you can choose which timer you actually want in, in the voice output, which one of them. And the switch would be not switching the timer on and off, but what switch do you want to make it speak to you? Um, because I've got the DS series of transmitter. Uh, it has the accelerometers and gyros built into it, so I just tilt the transmitter towards me as the switch to make it speak to the timer. Down to... Uh, the telemetry and these switches here. There's a repeat every 30 seconds switch and a trigger switch. Uh, there we are. And that refers to what we're going to set in here. And uh, one of the software upgrades a little while ago came out with single voice announcements. Now, if we have a look in single voice announcements first, and we can add something and what add a switch to it and the switch I like to use for um, triggering voice outputs is I have the three position spring-loaded switch so it's spring-loaded to the center position I can ping it either way so I will do that ping it away from me here we go and the sensor that I like to have on it is <clears throat> although it comes back in tele well, telemetry in a way really uh, is from the system and it's the Q value. We looked at that in the previous episode. You can have the A values out of 9 or the Q values, which is out of 100. The one that really matters is Q. Remember, uh, just because the antenna values are high, you could still have poor data quality. And if the antenna values are low, you could have high data quality. What matters is the data quality. So I'll choose that one. And Signal 100%. There you go. So, especially when you are um, doing the early flights of a new model that may, say, one of my you know, jet models, they can end up being quite a long distance away from you. There's a lot of metal in them. There could be carbon fiber, big fuel tanks, lots of shielding and reflections going on. And I do like to, uh, when the furthest part of the circles and circuits, just ping Signal that switch 100%. and get some feedback on how well it's doing. Okay. So do that one. Now, up to sensors and variables, which run off these two switches here, the repeat switch and the trigger switch. Um, we'll have a look in here. So we can choose a sensor, for instance, receiver voltage, and we can have it speak to us either using the repeat switch or the trigger switch. And we can set priority for it because we can actually put multiple ones here onto the same switch, and the priority, low, medium, or high, will determine the sequence in which they are spoken to you. So this is a bit different to single voice announcement. There's just the one available on the flick of the switch. This allows us multiples. Um, and the difference between repeat and trigger is obviously if repeat is switched on, it will repeat that value every 30 seconds. Switch it off, it won't. Trigger switch, It'll just say it the once, okay? Um, now, because I tend to use the spring-loaded switch, I could use either because I could use the repeat switch because, of course, it only switches on as I've pulled it, and as soon as I've released it, it's off, so it doesn't keep repeating. But, for argument's sake, we'll use the trigger switch this time. So I pull it towards me. Okay, that. And what am I going to have it speak to me? Um, receiver voltage, that's a nice one to have. 
Um, so I'll move along there. Trigger switch. I'll leave it low so it's the last of the ones that's spoken to me. And I don't need the antennas because I've got the Q, which is more important, on the other way around. Voltage, current now capacity, runtime. These are from the MUI sensor that we've got running. So let's have the uh, current. Now, when you initially fit a MUI sensor to the main battery running your electric motor, you tend to think, oh, it's the voltage that I need to use on the alarms. But remember, the voltage is incredibly variable depending on where you set the throttle. High throttle is going to drag the voltage way down, and you could get false alarms, false worries about low voltages or stuff. So I don't really rely on it much. I, I look at the voltage on the displayed telemetry, uh, before the start of the flight so that it's reading pretty much the fully charged voltage and I know therefore I've got a full fuel tank before I take off but after that pretty much ignore it. Interesting ones to know about would be capacity um, and the current. Current's very interesting um, because you know uh, if you've got electric models you hopefully you've got a watt meter that you can plug into the um, drive system between the battery and the speed controller and you've seen the maximum wattage that's being pulled and the current that's being pulled and you know that it's within the current and wattage limit of your speed controller and the battery and the motor. Uh, doing this in flight, listening to the current, is very interesting because uh, the uh, current drops of course as the motor unloads and how much it drops can be quite an eye-opener. Um, it, it's really quite astounding, but it's more of interest and it. it tells you stuff. Anyway, it's nice to know. So we'll put current into the trigger switch um, and we'll set that as medium priority. And we'll come down and we'll put capacity into the trigger switch as well and we'll set that as high priority. So now when I pull the trigger switch, it should tell me the capacity, the current, and receiver voltage with any luck capacity zero milliamp hours current zero amps receiver voltage 6.06 .06 volts there we go so you're flying around just ping that little switch and you can get live data on your model and you can add more than three just because there's high medium and low doesn't mean you're restricted to just one of each um let's just say out of interest We'll pick that one, set that as a, a medium priority, and now ping the switch, we'll get all of them read to us. Capacity, zero milliamp hours. Current, zero amps, zero watt minutes. Receiver voltage, 6.06 .06 volts. So there you go. Set these to tell you the stuff you really need to know. For instance, your receiver voltage, um, the capacity used of your battery, and as I say, my personal favourite, that single voice announcement one. Signal 100%. Lovely. If you like, you can uh, also set up, as I say, on this one to tell you the antenna values, but they are of a bit less interest. They're very helpful uh, at um, things like checking on range tests, whatever, to find if one of your aerials is performing poorly in one orientation, then you know it's getting blocked. Okay, where have we got to? Uh, system says nine minutes. Right, again, uh, we'll try and keep things to about a 10 minute video because that keeps people's concentration. So we'll quit there and we'll come back in episode four with setting up the automatic warnings for you from telemetry.